Star Wars The Phantom Menace is coming back to a theater near you. Celebrating its 25th anniversary, also, it just happens to fall on May the 4th, the official, unofficial Star Wars Day. But is this movie a worthy movie to put back in the theater for May the 4th? Is this a movie worthy of celebrating? After all, the movie is quite polarizing. Star Wars The Phantom Menace sets the stage for the epic saga by delving into the events preceding the original trilogy. The film follows Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn and his apprentice, Obi-Wan Kenobi, as they embark on a mission to negotiate peace between the Trade Federation and the planet Naboo. However, their diplomatic efforts are thwarted when they discover a sinister plot orchestrated by the Sith Lord Darth Sidious and his apprentice, Darth Maul, to take control of the galaxy. Amidst political intrigue and intergalactic conflict, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan ally themselves with young Anakin Skywalker, a talented but untrained slave boy with a strong connection to the Force. Recognizing Anakin's potential, Qui-Gon believes him to be the prophesied chosen one who will bring balance to the Force. As they navigate through battles, pod racing competitions, and encounters with various allies and adversaries, including Queen Amidala, Jar Jar Binks, and others, they strive to protect Naboo and uncover the truth behind the mysterious Sith presence. The film culminates in a climactic lightsaber duel between Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Darth Maul, resulting in Qui-Gon's death and Anakin's pivotal step towards his destiny. Also, fans were very disappointed seeing Darth Maul get cut in half. Star Wars The Phantom Menace introduced audiences to key characters, conflicts, and themes that shaped the course of the entire Star Wars Skywalker saga setting the stage for the rise of the Sith, the fall of the Jedi Order, and the emergence of Anakin Skywalker as Darth Vader. But Star Wars The Phantom Menace received a mixed reception upon its release in 1999. While it was highly anticipated by fans who were eager to return to the beloved galaxy far, far away, the film faced criticism for various aspects of its storytelling, dialogue, and characters. One of the main points of contention was the character of Jar Jar Binks, a CGI-driven comic relief character whose antics divided audiences. Some found Jar Jar's slapstick humor endearing, while others felt that he detracted from the overall tone of the film. Additionally, some critics and fans felt that the pacing of the film was uneven, with certain sections dragging while others felt rushed. The political subplot involving the Trade Federation and the blockade of Naboo was also criticized for being overly complex and confusing for younger audiences. However, The Phantom Menace was also praised for its groundbreaking visual effects, particularly in the realm of CGI and digital filmmaking. The film introduced audiences to stunning new worlds, creatures, and technology, pushing the boundaries of what was possible in filmmaking at the time. Overall, while The Phantom Menace had its flaws, it remains an integral part of the Star Wars saga and has garnered a dedicated fan base over the years. Despite the initial mixed reception, Subsequent generations of fans have found enjoyment in the film and appreciate its contributions to the larger mythology of the franchise. So the question becomes, are you going to go see it? Guys, I am totally sitting here at 50-50. On one hand, it's Star Wars. On one hand, it would be nice to go back and, I don't know, relive the moment from 1999. After all, me and my channel partner Nick stood in line for this movie for like 12 hours finally got to go in, see the midnight release, and it was a great event. But the event itself, in this circumstance, was better than the actual movie. Yes, I was able to go see Star Wars on the big screen. Yes, Star Wars was back. But something felt off. We left that first experience seeing it, and we were like, Star Wars was back, that was awesome, right? Wasn't it? We actually went and watched it the next day again. And my feeling for the movie was significantly less. And then on the third watch on the third day, I realized I don't think I like it. It just doesn't feel like Star Wars to me. Now, I'm not trying to pee in anybody's Cheerios. I know a lot of people grew up with the Phantom Menace, the generation who comes after mine, and this was their Star Wars. This was what they grew up with. This was their first love in the franchise. Totally respect that. If that is you, I get it. I'm glad you, I'm glad that you love it. I'm glad that it is what it is for you. But for me, this just left a void. 
There was a void that needed to be filled with Star Wars, and this did not do it for me. I did honestly think that Attack of the Clones was a little better, and I thought Revenge of the Sith was pretty good. But Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, do I really want to go back and watch this in the theater again? Is that an experience I want to live through again? I just don't know. That's where you come in. Let me know in the comments what you think. Yes, the dollars do go to Disney. Yes, people are going to be upset for people going to watch it. It is what it is. How could you support Disney? They're never going to fix it if you support them. Well, guys, I honestly don't know how well this movie is going to do in the theater. This could be a terrible mistake for Star Wars, for Lucasfilm. I know it's the 25th anniversary, but wouldn't Star Wars be better served on May the 4th to release Star Wars? Or as as the layman call it, A New Hope? Wouldn't that be better? Now that one, I would certainly go back and watch. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? What's your memories of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace? Are you buying or selling going and watching this this week? We are You Are Echo Base Network. See you guys on the next one.